I am really excited to be doing this. So five days ago, I made a post in my community section saying that I'm debating doing a programming series where I create an old school RuneScape related app. And I got 392 likes, some really good comments, and you know what, here we are. What this series is going to be is my process of creating an old school RuneScape high score page where people can make an account and then make a custom high score list. So let's say you only wanna have people from your clan chat on your high score list, then you can add them all and they're there. That, that's what I'm looking to do. What this series is going to be is my process of building that in code. How I design it, how I execute it, how I build it to the server, all that good stuff is what this is going to be. Not gonna focus on the nitty gritty code. There will be nitty gritty code, but I'm not gonna go through it line by line. Uh, rather, I'm gonna talk about kind of the big picture of what I'm doing and how it fits into the system. One of the few things that I've actually learned from going to school to be a programmer is that you should design your application before you go and program it. You're gonna waste time if you jump in and be a cowboy. That being said, they also say you should make things like flowcharts, use cases, and a million other types of design documents. I say screw all that, that's a lot of work. I still like being a cowboy. So instead, I do one type of planning. I make a really, really, really rough sketch of the graphical user interface. Okay, here's the really rough sketch, and I've thought of some functionality that I want for this, and just to be clear, this is the home page. When you first visit, visit the website, this is what you see. So first up, I wanna have a couple search criteria. I want people to be able to search for a group, and what a group is, is like a clan chat, or a Discord server, or a special type of peer build, like Underground Only Iron Man's, whatever. You search for it, and then in this main section here, it shows all of the groups that have been created, that correspond to that query. Then I also want an option to search by player. So if you search for my name, for example, flop, then here it's going to return all of the groups that I have created. On the left-hand side, I kind of want to have a quick option to do that. So I want to have options just to quickly see all of the clan groups, all of the peer build groups, all the skiller groups, whatever the heck, right in the middle. Then we're going to have a login and a registration in the top right. And then in the middle, before you do any type of searching, uh, I just want to display the trending groups, like groups that are on top. I haven't actually figured out exactly what a trending group is yet, but that's kind of what I want it to be. And I've broken this up into, into two groups. So the top group is for paid promotion. You know, web servers and domains can get expensive, so I want some way to pay that back and monetize it. So maybe clan owners can buy a spot on like the top three uh, as kind of like a sticky to help promote their clan and always have it on the homepage or whatever. Maybe it'll be like a dollar a week. And then down here is going to be the actual trending groups. Once again, not exactly sure what a trending group is, but we'll figure it out. So that's cool. We've got a game plan, but the next thing we need to do is design a database. And the database is the memory of the application. It's where we store all of the information. It's that big scary thing that keeps track of everything that you do on the internet. So I've gone ahead and laid out the database. The first table is user and this holds all of the accounts of people who register on the website. The only main field of interest here is access level. So this is going to allow me to have like my administration account, maybe a moderator account, maybe a band account, whatever. That's what that's for. The next table is authentication and the purpose of this is to use what's called JSON web tokens. It's a security thing and we'll talk about those later. And then I have the more interesting tables. This is how groups actually work. This is where their memory is stored. And so under the group table, I've defined uh, the name of the group, the type of the group. So is it a clan group? Is it a peer group? Is it a skiller group? Whatever. And then finally, is it promoted? So that's that advertising I was talking about a little bit before. And then I have a group members table. So this is where we keep track of what player belongs to what group. And we do that between these two fields, player ID and group ID. And then of course, how do we keep the player information? Well, we need to have a player table. So here is a table called player that stores all of the information that you would find on the RuneScape high score page. So their username, their attack, strength, defense level, their total XP, all of that good stuff. And then finally, I made a last table called moderator in case you own a group and you wanna add moderators to it who can add and remove users. So let's say you own a really big clan, you don't wanna be the only person with that capability, so you have moderators. I'm going to be using this environment called WAMP to put a web server on my local machine so I can actually turn that database design into a real database that I can play with using code. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So here is the database software called PHP My Admin. This allows us to create MySQL databases and play with them. Uh, so I'm gonna make a database for this called High Scores. And now I need to go ahead and create my tables. And I set how many fields or columns there is in each table. For user, there is six. And then I go ahead and give it some information about each of those fields. Okay, so user is all set up. I've had to define some data types, which means am I storing a number? Am I storing some text? Am I storing a date, etc. cetera? Uh, so this is the users table done, minus that error. All right, so I've gone ahead and created all of those tables I wanted, uh, except the player table, which is all the data that comes from the RuneScape high scores. Uh, the RuneScape high scores offers a thing known as an API which is just a way to talk to RuneScape servers and say, hey, give me all the information about a certain player. And when you do that, it gives you back this big long output of information. And if you look carefully, this represents information about the player. So I need to look at all of this data, compare it to the RuneScape high scores and figure out what fields I need for my player table. Okay, so I've been toying around even more with the RuneScape API, trying to decipher what output from the API corresponds to what is actually on the high scores. And I mean, you can see a basic trend here, like the very first thing is overall. So 431 here represents the rank of overall. And then we get the skill max total level. And then we get um, the total experience of the player, which is right here. A couple general comments I want to make. First off, the RuneScape API is disgusting. Um, in no way, shape, or form should you ever, ever, ever output data from an API that looks like this. Uh, normally, what a good API will do is output it in a format like JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And the benefit of that is not only is the output very user-friendly to the coder, but it's also very human readable. So instead of having just your numbers separated by commas and spaces, um, it would actually give you some information about what each number is. Like 433 would be defined in JavaScript object notation as being the rank for overall. Anyways, one of the other things that I noticed about the uh, API output and I've kind of mentioned is how they've separated all of the data. It's so bizarre. Um, so first off, they're using two types of separators. They're using a comma and they're using a space. From staring at this, I realized their intent was to separate data by commas and skills by, by spaces. Every time there's a space, if I separated that by a couple lines, uh, it all adds up pretty quick, right? So we can see that once I've done that, the first one here uh, represents the overall skill. And then the second one will correspond to attack and you'll see 143 adds up 143 same type of same experience there and then the next one of course is going to be defense and it goes down in that order let me clarify one thing that i've been saying too i've been saying that i need to compare this api output to the high score page to figure out what data fields i need to put into my sql server uh, that's not entirely true. So all the data fields obviously are already kind of defined in this. I don't actually need to look at the API output at all. Like just by looking at the high score page, I can tell I want an overall, I want an attack, a defensive strength, and I want, you know, a rank level and experience for each one of those skills. What I'm really trying to do by looking at this API is figuring out what position uh, these are located at in the API output. Like, for example, I know if I split each of these by the space, that's going to put each group at a certain position. So this group here will be at position zero, and then its elements respectively will be zero, one, and two. This skill is going to be at position one, and its elements zero, one, and two. So on and so forth, all the way down the chain. And what that allows me to do is in code, actually call those positions to get the specific data for the specific skill and then push that into the database. Admittedly, I've come to an annoying design choice on how I wanna implement the players table in the database, just because simply how much data there is to work with. So in RuneScape, there's 23 skills, but on the high score, there's also almost an overall skill. So that makes 24. And each of those has a rank, a level, and an experience amount associated with. Um, that means that there would be 72 fields in one table if I was to incorporate each of these into it. I'm thinking 
I could break it up and have a separate table that deals with just the rank, just the level, and just the experience of each skill. Or I could input the data in a way that it's split. So I, I could have just 24 fields and then an input of the comma separated rank level and experience. Not exactly sure what I want to do yet. Also, if you've never learned of the joys of holding alt and selecting things in Microsoft, you should because it is a godsend. Okay, so if you haven't noticed, what I've decided on doing is the big, long, nasty, huge SQL table. Um, not ideal, but you know what, it'll work. And once I write the code for it, it'll be really simple and easy to call from. So what I've done is some Notepad++ magic to go ahead and make the fields that I need in the database um, from the RuneScape high scores. I'm not going to bother adding any of that clue scroll stuff in there. Um, maybe eventually we'll get to that and put it in and have it, but for now I'm not. It just overcomplicates things. The only two other fields that I have to add to this is the unique ID and the username. And that should be good to go. Actually, we're not good to go. I just realized I messed one thing up a little bit. Um, so in programming, you have different styles of casing, how you capitalize things. And the style I've been using in my database so far is camel casing. So every word starts with a lowercase um, or the first word and everything starts with a lowercase. And then the second word will start with an uppercase. That way you can kind of distinguish. So this is camel casing. Um, but this right now does not follow that scheme. So let me just go ahead and quickly fix that. So select them and then it should be control U shit. Control U to lowercase. Perfect. Okay, so normally I would input the fields manually, um, but obviously this one is too big, so I'm actually going to go ahead and write an SQL table build query to do it for me um, using some of that same Notepad++ magic. So every one of these is a number, so the data type for that in programming is an int, and uh, I'm going to use the macro again to easily put int at the end of this, at the end of every one of these attributes, that's what we call them, is an attribute. So I'm going to put int and a comma, and then I'm going to move up one, and I'm going to stop my macro. And I know that there's 23 things left above this, so I'm going to run it 23 times. And then uh, let's go ahead and delete this field. It's not necessary. Oh, actually, there's 24 because I added a field. Oh, wait, but this was all times three. Shit. Okay, let's try that again. I think there's actually like 74 fields above this. Um, either way, we'll get there. Yeah, okay, that was perfect. So it looks like a couple of these got messed up because we can see like it cut off the level. I won't bother redoing the macro. I'll just move them over. It's not that bad of a problem. No, I wasn't entirely entirely truthful. Uh, not every single one of these is a number. For example, actually the only one that isn't is username. And in RuneScape, this is a string or a bunch of text um, that is no more than 12 characters long. So in MySQL database, uh, we represent that as something called a varchar. And then we give it a size of 12. So this means it can be any text that's not a symbol or not a special character that is 12 letters long. At least that's what I think it means. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So the moment of truth happens when we try to run this script, will it work? I'm not sure, but I'm really hoping it will. And yeah, it created it. We can go over here, click on players, and here we have a really, really, really ugly, really, really long database table that will store all of the stuff that we need. One thing that I just realized that I forgot to do when I made this players table is I forgot to set ID to the primary key and I forgot to make it auto incrementing. Um, so that's a pretty easy fix. All I have to do is go to structure and then underneath more for ID, I set it to primary, hit OK, and then I hit change, and I can select this auto increment property here and save. Uh, and what that does is this means um, this is the single value that references all the rest of the data in the table. Whenever I have data in here, um, its ID will always increase by one for each item entered. So the first player put in here is going to live at ID one, 
The second player that's put in here is going to live at ID 2. And whenever I want to access them, all I have to do is say, give me the player at ID 2. Okay, I think this is a good natural stopping point for the video now that we've finished creating the database and we've made a really, really rough sketch of what the hell the application is going to look like. I'm really excited to move on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, in the next video, what is going to happen is I'm going to download NetBeans, which is an integrated development environment. Um, I'm going to use that to create a PHP API that will run on the back end so we can actually access this database and perform uh, what are called CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete things from the database. Like we can make a new player or we can delete a player, whatever the heck. Um, and we're probably going to try working on uh, accessing the RuneScape API to get that information and put it into the database. I'm really excited about that. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely not my normal. Um, I want to try it out because I made that post on the community tab. It got a lot of likes. Um, probably do one of these videos every other week. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And until next time, love, peace, and chicken grease.